Actobox has been growing in popularity as an FTC building system over the past few years. And in this video, we're going to be comparing it to Tetrix, one of the more popular building systems. One of the things that we see when building with Actobotics is how the beams actually line up really, really nicely. When using these standard L brackets that they have and lining up your beams in a square pattern, you can see that the whole pattern uh, at the top two beams lines up really perfectly with whatever Actobotics components you're using, and so you can put a beam all the way across. You run into problems with Tetrix, where if you're using their outside L brackets, then you'll have a little bit of spacing between your beams on the top and bottom, and that will result in the whole pattern not lining up and the beam won't fit across. Another advantage that we see with Actobotics is some of their components are really rigid. And one example of that is these L bracket type connections that are these aluminum blocks and they're able to fit on the outside of any beams and connect the two with uh, no spacing in between. So you can make sure that this whole pattern is nicely lined up if you want to put another plate there or something like that. And they can also fit on the inside of the actual beam itself. And what this allows you to do is make two beams uh, joined together in basically the same profile that you would have one of those normal L brackets in, except with these really rigid aluminum blocks. Another cool thing that we see with Actobotics is the fact that you can fit all of your gearboxes and gears inside of a channel. And the main advantage there is that you have a really low profile with the same amount of strength. So here's an example, we have a 1 to 4 gearbox, we are going 1 to 2 and then 1 to 2 again. And you know you end up with a 1 to 4 output on the back. And then we're also using a low profile channel. Uh, motor mount, so you don't really have to do any finagling to get the gears to mesh properly, they just mesh automatically. And then over here we have the Tetrix version, which is much larger, much heavier. The gearing will end up the same, you're going to get the same output on this shaft, except you have to make sure that your gearing, your gearing mesh is proper for the first two gears, and it's also just a lot heavier, a little bit more complicated, larger and the profile of this much smaller, much lighter Actobotics gearbox is really beneficial. Again, along the lines of gearboxes inside channels, you can do some really cool stuff using the normal motor mounts and fitting a axle all the way through your channel. And what this does is it makes your main chassis beam really, really low to the ground, so you don't really need a skirt for any sorts of cubes or balls that are coming up against the sides of your robot and it's also great for attaching stuff and having a really low center of gravity. And because the channels and gears that you're able to get are so small, you're able to fit it inside of the channel and keep a really low profile with your gearbox to motor. Along the lines of compatibility between Tetrix and Actobotics, they don't really work well together at all, but there are a few things that we found that do work well together, one of which is the more uh, complex and nicer of the two types of Tetrix motor mounts fit really nicely into the beam and the holes line up pretty perfectly, except it is only on one side of the beam, so you are pretty limited in that sense. And Tetrix or Actobotics also sells an adapter that goes from the Actobotics hole pattern to a Tetrix hole pattern, which is really useful because you're able to combine parts and use parts uh, that are Tetrix based but don't really work with Actobotics. One important thing that we highlighted in one of our earlier videos is making sure that your servos are really strong and have another connection point on the outside to make sure that they don't break off if there's any load that's stressed on them. And these are the fancy and really expensive Actobotics mounts that we were referring to and there are certain ways that you're able to make a system sort of like this out of Tetrix but it takes up a little bit more space and has a whole bunch of different components. And we found a way to do that with standard Actobotics components as well, which uses this cha inside channel servo mount, uh, a few uh, couplers and mounts on the inside to connect to an axle, and then also this face mount here to connect our bearing. And then we can also mount this anywhere along the channel, which is really cool, because you can't really do that with this uh, servo block. And so that's one of the advantages that this little system here has over this servo block while having the same degree of strength. Last year on our robot, we used Actobotics and Tetrix for different use cases all around our robot. And hopefully this video can allow you to figure out where to use Tetrix and where to use Actobotics on your robot.